Hello, this is Steve at stevehuffphoto.com and I am here today with the Fuji X-Pro1 and I just wanted to give this brief little intro. I made a video for you guys showing the menu system and an overview of the first three lenses for the X-System, the 18, the 35, and the 60 macro. And I just wanted to let you guys know the full written review will be up in the next two to three weeks at stevehuffphoto.com. Make sure you check it out and make sure you subscribe to me on YouTube so you can see all of the new videos that will be coming up of the Fuji X Pro 1 system. As you can see right here, I have the optional hand grip on it, and it actually feels really good in the hand with the grip. I didn't think I'd like it, but I do. So take a look at this first look video. This is basically just after I had the camera at like an hour. So after that, you will see all of the features of the menu, and then in the next two to three weeks, you will see the full written review. So enjoy. Thank you. Okay, here we are with the X Pro One in the retail box. This is came direct directly to me from Fujifilm USA. This was not bought in Japan. I have uh, sent it to me from Fuji to review. So I'm going to open it up so you guys can see exactly how it is packaged. So when you get your orders that you pre-ordered, you will know what to expect. So inside the bigger box, you have two smaller boxes. So in the top box should be the camera. And it's got this nice foam packaging, you can see right there. And it's got a magnetic flap, which we first saw in the Leica X1. So we take the camera out of the bag, and there you go. Now, first impressions, um, it's a nice size. It feels like a real camera. It's not a toy kind of camera. Um, it's light, but at the same time it feels pretty well made. It doesn't feel cheap at all to me. Um, you have the grip here. You have your top plate, Fujifilm X-Pro1. You have your dials, and this will not get turned accidentally because to turn it you have to push this button. Uh, here you have your exposure compensation dial which is actually pretty stiff feeling. Now this is the first time I'm messing with the dial, so my impressions right now are the very first impressions. So basically, let me zoom out a little bit, um, the dial's pretty firm. It feels a little firmer than the uh, X100, which would sometimes switch out of place. You have your function button, which you can assign to just about anything. On the rear of the camera, you have your LCD, your drive button, which, and these buttons are very big and they feel solid. Okay, A, E, A, F, your playback button, display back, view mode, you can set if you want to um, look at the LCD or use the viewfinder, your menu buttons, macro buttons, you have a jog wheel here that also pushes in for selection purposes, uh, qual or Q button, I think that brings up a quick menu, so the Q probably stands for quick menu. Uh, the bottom, here's where your battery compartment is, right here. Your battery and your SD card goes inside. And this is your selection switch for the hybrid EVF. Uh, the hybrid EVF, as you guys know, can use an optical um, with overlay or an electronic viewfinder. As in the X100, I'm going to prefer using the electronic viewfinder. I just find it more enjoyable to use. Uh, this is your selection switch, single continuous manual for focus. So if you want single shot focus, continuous focus, or manual focus, you have an actual physical dial for that. On the side you have a little compartment where you can put your, uh, looks like HDMI and USB. So overall the body feels really good. It's very nice looking. It looks nicer in person to me than it did in the uh, photographs that were out, say, on B&H and all of the websites that were selling it. It looks really nice. It's kind of a combination between gloss and matte black, so I have no complaints with the body styling or the body feel. Um, so there we go. Let's see what else came in the Fuji X-Pro1 packaging. Okay, also inside, this is the second box, and inside, as you can see, you have your CD, some instruction manuals, you know, all the stuff that's typically included. Here we have a power cable for your charger. You have the actual charger itself, the battery for the camera, um, some strap protector so it doesn't scratch up your uh, the camera finish. 
the Fuji X Pro One strap. What else do we have in here? And a USB cable. So that's pretty much all that comes in the packaging, which is everything you need to operate the camera. I'm going to leave the battery out so I can put it in and show you guys the menu system of the X Pro One. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys the three lenses that Fuji sells with the X Pro One or for the X Pro One. I, I don't want to say with it because they don't give you the lenses. Uh, this one is going to be the most popular, the 35 millimeter f1.4. Uh, you're getting a fast 35, but seeing that the X Pro One has a crop sensor, APS-C, you're looking at this is going to be an equivalent of a 50 millimeter f1.4. This is very nice packaging, probably the nicest packaging I've seen for any lens. You have a separate compartment in the box with your manual and it looks like a lens case as well, possibly, or a cloth. Oh, it's a lens cloth, a cleaning cloth. So you get that. And the actual packaging for the lens is another magnetic flap enclosure. There we go. Nice foam protection here. The actual lens itself is right in the main compartment. And there we go, there's the 3514. Let's take the cap off. There you go. The rear cap. Now it's not as heavy as a Leica lens, but it feels it still feels nice. You have the manual aperture dial here. That's really smooth. So these lenses are like six, seven hundred dollars, but in comparison, a Leica 3514 is five thousand dollars. So it'll be interesting to see if this can even come close to something like a Leica M9 with the 3514. Because if so, that will be pretty incredible. In the box you also get with the lens, it looks like we have a uh, lens cap. This is actually like a Leica style lens cap there. And you have the lens hood where the cap will go onto. So here is the lens hood, which, there we go. So now that's what it looks like with the lens hood attached, and then you just snap the cap on. So that's the Fuji 35 f1.4 lens, which is, in my opinion, probably the best lens to get that out of the ones they have right now. They have an 18 um, millimeter and I believe a 60 macro, but this is the most general purpose lens, the 35 1.4. Okay, now here is the... XF 60 millimeter 2.4 macro lens. So this is actually really cool because a lot of people are in the macro uh, and it's sometimes hard to find good macro lenses. And this one looks like it's going to be of the same quality as the 35. Inside the box you also have your same setup, the cleaning cloth and the instructions. You have the magnetic flap box. And the same kind of deal. And here is the 60. I'll just go over this one very quickly. Show you what it looks like. Again, you have the manual aperture dial. Starts at f2.4. So it's relatively fast for a 60 macro. And it looks like you would expect a macro lens to look like. Um, I will be testing out this lens with the camera system. Uh, and show you guys all the results from it. Now it also comes with this hood which is metal. So it comes with this big metal hood as well. And I believe this lens is also six to six ninety nine. I think they're all six ninety nine if I remember correctly. Um, so it'll be interesting. I'll, I'll be looking forward to testing out the macro. Now I'm going to also show you the 18 millimeter Fuji lens. Okay, so here's the 18 millimeter F2 lens, which is the equivalent of say a 28 millimeter on full frame. So you're getting a nice, pretty much 28 equivalent f2 lens and there's the lens with the cap off it's very this is probably the smallest lens of the group uh, f2 to f16 and it also just like the others comes with a lens hood which is very cool that Fuji included these because so many companies these days they charge you an extra like hundred dollars just for the lens hood so these have all metal lenses hoods included with the lens and this one does come with the same square 
lens cap, which reminds me of the newest Leica lenses. And I love these boxes. Leica doesn't even come with boxes like this. They have the magnetic flap for each of them in a nice black, stealthy box that just says Fujifilm on the top. Okay, here's something I haven't seen yet, actually. I also was sent the X-Pro1 hand grip, which you can attach to the camera. Let's see what it looks like. It's the first time I'm taking it out of the box. So it's almost like the Leica M9 grips. Kind of screws into the bottom, just like a Leica M9. Look at that. Screws into the bottom. This is kind of uh, a soft, plush material in here, so it's not going to scratch your camera. And this gives a little bit of an extra finger grip. So this is kind of a cool accessory. I will also put it on the camera so you guys can see what it looks like. Okay, so here is the X-Pro1. I added the grip to it. As you can see, it makes it a little bit taller. And it also gives you that nice place to put your lower three fingers. That's what seems to fit perfectly right there. So your first finger is on the shutter. Your second one goes naturally to the exposure compensation and the jog dial in the back. And your first three fingers go on to the grip and it feels really nice. So there's what it looks like with the grip and then I'll take it off so you can get a look at it with it off again. And there it is. This is with the 35 F1.4 attached. So either way, yeah, it feels better with the grip. Definitely get a much better grip on it. But uh, I'm going to show you guys the menu system now to show you um, how it's different from the X100, any new features, and then I'll also talk about the shooting speed, AF speed, and my very first thoughts on image quality. Okay, menu. As soon as you turn it on, you get the shooting menu. As you see on the left side, it's numbered 1 through 5 for the shooting menu. Then you have your settings menus, which go all the way down here. You see 5, then it goes 1, 2, 3. So then you have 3 setting menus and 5 shooting menus. So we'll start at the beginning of the shooting menu. ISO, you can set the ISO to auto uh, and have it max out anywhere between 400 and 3200. You can also set it manually to anywhere between 200 and 6400. You can also go into high modes of 12,800 and 25,600. Now I haven't shot any with this just yet in low light because I just got the camera. <clears throat> but I am going to test it at every ISO available because from what I've seen, the X-Pro1 is one of the best uh, low light high ISO cameras right now on the market. Your image size. <clears throat> you can go small to large, anywhere in between. Um, I keep it. I would keep it at large. Image quality, you can go fine, normal, fine and raw, normal and raw, or just raw. I always shoot fine and raw. Uh, I like so sometimes I'll use JPEGs, uh, and the JPEGs from the X Pro One are really good, so I would have no problem using it. Uh, dynamic range is the same as the X100. You can set it from 100 to 400. You do get a little bit of an improvement uh, if you set it to 200 or 400, but I. On the X100, I like keeping it on 100. Film simulation modes, you have your standard, which is Provia, uh, Provia simulation, Velvia. Ast okay, so here's Pro Negative Standard. There's Pro Negative High. You have Monochrome, and then you have the Monochrome with all the filters, Sepia, and it goes back to Provia. So you have a bunch of different JPEG filters you can use. You can also bracket the film simulations, so you can try different ones, Self Timer. Now we're on the shooting menu too. We got white balance. Then you can change your color, sharpness, highlight tone, shadow tone, noise reduction. You can set the values from zero to negative to uh, positive. So you can make it higher or lower. Um, what else? We got long exposure noise reduction. You probably would want that on if you're doing long exposures. Now we're in shooting menu three. You can have all your custom settings. You can have up to seven custom menus. Um, you can edit your custom settings. You can choose your AF mode to area or uh, multi. Corrected AF frame, focal length setting. Now this is, I'm assuming, this is if you're using manual lenses because you can use Leica lenses on this with an adapter. So you can manually set the focal length of whatever lens you're using. Shoot without lens if you're going to use Leica lenses. You're going to want that to be turned on. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to take a picture. You can customize your function button with any one of these choices. Multiple exposure, preview depth of field, ISO, self timer, image size, image quality, dynamic range, film simulation, white balance, AF mode, movie, 
or raw. Um, now we're on shooting menu four and you can do multiple exposures. You can do more custom settings, framing guidelines, AF illuminator on or off. So if you're in low light, you want that on. So it will help lock AF. You can choose your lock mode, auto rotate your images. Now we're in setting menu five. Um, your flash power, red eye removal, and all of that good stuff. So let's go over to the settings menu. Setup, date time, time difference, reset, silent mode. You can turn off the little beeps that you hear. You can turn that off so you don't hear them. Uh, you can choose how you want it to number your frames. Uh, focus ring, direction, how you want it to turn when you're using manual. Um, power save mode, off, quick start mode. Let's turn that on. Auto power off after two minutes. Um, what else do we have? Operation volume, sensor cleaning, color space, background color, and format. So there you go. That's pretty much your whole menu. Um, it's pretty simple. Also, if you press this uh, Q, which is like a quick menu, you can change all your settings right here just by going to them and turning this jog dial. And then you're all set. So basically the Fuji X100 is much like, or the X-Pro1 is much like the X100. Um, you can choose your display on the back here. If you press display back, it works the same as the X100. Got standard mode. You can choose view mode up here, which I usually put on eye sensor. That way if your eye goes up to the viewfinder, then the viewfinder automatically comes on and your back LCD goes off. When you move it away, your LCD will come back on. So that's all the same as the uh, X100. But again, uh, I shot this with on for only like an hour. I've probably only shot 20 photos with it so far. And from what I've seen, the autofocus is indeed faster than the X100, but not by much. <clears throat> it is not as fast as something like a Nikon V1. It is not as fast as even the Pentax K1 I reviewed a couple weeks ago. But it is faster than the X100, which at times got frustrating. Um, I'm also interested to test the movie mode on this because I was not a fan of the movie mode on the X100. So I'm hoping this is better. And with these lenses, which appear to be really good, I think we're going to get better results. Um, other than that, that's about all I can tell you with a first, very first look. The camera looks great, feels great. Uh, the shutter sounds pretty good too. You can hear it right there. I'll do a couple more. So it actually has a typical shutter sound, but it feels, so it's like a solid click. There you go. It's not like a generic sounding mirror flap because it doesn't have a mirror. So there you go. There's the Fuji X-Pro1. Look for my full review uh, sometime in the next two to three weeks because I'm going to be shooting with this all that time just so I can get a really good uh, idea of how I like it and how it does, how it performs. I will be posting some uh, quick early looks with some sample photos uh, this week with some high ISO night shots as well and I will be shooting it at the Vegas meetup this weekend so all you guys joining me in Vegas you'll be able to check it out as well. So thanks for watching this first look at the Fuji X-Pro1 and thanks for coming to stevehuffphotos.com. I'll see you soon.